Picture this scene. The year is 2021, the gaming scene is booming with blockbuster releases, Deathloop, Resident Evil Village, Metroid Dread, just to name a few. However, during a game show featuring upcoming titles from Square Enix, the lights suddenly go out. The room goes silent, and in the midst of the quiet, the words Full Metal Alchemist Mobile shine proudly on the showcase exhibit. As a fan of the show, I was ecstatic to learn that the Square is going to be producing a brand new title for one of my favorite animes, but I couldn't help but worry about that last word at the end of the tagline. Mobile titles are a tricky beast to get right, ranging from a list of grievances players experience from other games, over monetization, in-game energy restraints, and graphical fidelity. These are some of the things that many mobile titles struggled with. I'm very happy to say, though, that during my playtime, I haven't run into really any of these grievances. That being said, there are things that I do want to talk about that are a little concerning about this otherwise surprisingly fun and addictive new entry into the Full Metal franchise. To start things off, how does the game go about its story? Being attached to an IP as beloved as Full Metal Alchemist, things have to be done the right way from the get-go. FMA Mobile very closely follows the story told by Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood chronicling the tales of Edward and Alphonse Elric in their quest to restore their bodies to normal after making a terrible mistake in their youth. As we progress their story, we meet all the fan favorites. Roy Mustang, Alex Louise Armstrong, Maze Hughes, the Homunculi, just to name a few. The real catch here, though, lies in how Square Enix has decided to go about the game's combat system, which I know a few players may be a bit surprised to see when they get into the game. Given most of the games Square Enix has released for FMA have been mostly arcadey brawlers transmuting things in the field, I found that the gameplay for FMA Mobile really quite shocking in the fact that for a mobile title, they decided to go with something less Streets of Rage and more Fire Emblem? In FMA Mobile, you select between a multitude of characters, usually in squads of 5 to 6 units, and place them into a grid-based battlefield, utilizing positioning and tactics to complete missions, gain the game's materials and rewards. But the trick here is knowing the strengths and weaknesses of your units and deciding which enemy each unit will try to take down. Those familiar with Fire Emblem and Final Fantasy Tactics will feel right at home after they get accustomed to each unit's unique skill sets and also the game's affinity system. Every unit in the game has a set affinity. Heart units or red units will deal more damage to body units or green units, where green will deal more damage to blue or technique units, and then blue will deal more damage to red units. This affinity will inversely do less damage to the other type, which means that red does less damage to blue, and then blue does less damage to green, so it's kind of like a triangle strategy cyclical system. In FMA Mobile, though, there are three more affinities to juggle during these skirmishes, adding another layer of strategy to keep in mind to really dominate the various missions. Light, or creation type units, will deal more damage to dark, or destruction types. The flip side of that coin is that dark units will deal more damage to light units when they attack. The only outlying affinity that neither deals more damage or takes more damage from any other type is white or humanity. These units are usually support type units that are meant to support your party either through healing and buffs or by debuffing the enemy squadrons. Another thing to keep in mind are your faction bonuses, granted by either having two units from the same faction in the squad or having four members of the same faction giving even stronger buffs and even playstyle changes. For instance, using a full squad of four shadow faction members will change how enemies take damage from your attacks that being based off of how many debuffs the targeted enemy unit has at the time of being attacked. With all these layers of strategy to juggle, most players will probably be a bit lost at first, but once they grasp the fundamentals and use those layers to their advantage, enemy squadrons are going to fall very quickly, and should leave the players feeling fairly satisfied with the sense of accomplishment as the progress they've made building their squad's strength and overcoming some pretty tough engagements by using their characters to their fullest. As far as I'm concerned, FMA Mobile has some of the cleanest and most artistically styled graphics I've seen in a mobile title. Characters are displayed in beautifully shaded 3D models in cutscenes and in skirmishes, they're just as pretty to look at running across the grid. The best thing though is when your units engage with the enemy, where we see a cutaway of your chosen unit and their target duking it out one-on-one -on -one to see who comes out on top. Later on in the game, you can even train your faction units to assist units from the same faction by jumping in and dishing out additional punishment to the enemy before skipping out, 
allowing even more importance to placing your characters in strategically advantageous locations for maximum damage. Every unit has a beautifully done quick cutscene that'll play out as well when they use their individual ultimate techniques that show off each unit's unique fighting styles. Now, for as much as there is for me to heap praise at, there are a few things that I am concerned with. And, by extension, other players should be aware of when they either decide to give the game a shot or give the game a pass. Full Metal Alchemist Mobile is by far one of the most polished tactical strategy RPG games that I've played in a while. And the bonus to this is that it's on your phone. If your phone can handle the game, then you have this at your fingertips wherever you want, so long as your phone has an internet connection. The major downside, though, is that the game, regardless of how much I've loved my time with it so far, is still, at the end of the day, a gotcha-style game. The trappings of every gotcha are here in FMA Mobile. You from restrictive energy limits, certain pop-ups encouraging players to spend money to get diamond packs. The good news is that the game hasn't really given me as many pop-ups as I was afraid of, but there are often enough there to be warranting concern. Also, as a gacha game, most of the game's best units are locked off behind having to pull them using a game of chance off-timed character banners. These banners are limited in availability, and once they are over, it'll be hard to tell when a unit that you want is going to be back. Another main concern that I have is that the way the game upgrades your units. In FMA Mobile, to fully rank up a character to their max rank, you're going to need multiple copies of the same character, roughly eight copies in total, in order to fully realize their potential. Unit rates are also really slim, matching other gotchas and pull rates, meaning that you can pull a very rare SSR unit really quickly, while others you may have to run your pulls all the way up to Mercy before you can get a single copy of the featured unit. The only variable with getting a character that you want is how your luck is for that day. It's not all bad, though. There's a feature in the game that will auto-farm some valuable materials for you over time, even when you're not actively playing. There are also some SSRs that you can obtain through playing the game. A copy of Roy Mustang can be obtained by new players if they're able to complete enough of the new player missions that the game gives you at the start. There's also an SSR ticket that Square Enix gives to new players to allow them to choose between Izumi, Armstrong, or Mei Chang for another free unit. And then finally, if players participate in enough PvP matches, they can gather enough tokens to get a copy of Izumi from the PvP shop, giving new players a chance at some pretty powerful units for relatively no cost. For most of these concerns, it may seem like fairly trivial things, considering that some other games require much more out of the player in order for them to really get started. FMA Mobile, however, encourages using more than just SSRs to really maximize the potential of your teams. The fact that being free to play so far seems like an actual doable task without jumping through hoops, and also from the game being provided by Square Enix, whose mobile division has more hits than misses, I think I can give some of these gripes a pass. Well, to wrap things up on this short video, all I can say is that without a doubt, the time that I've spent in FMA Mobile has felt like some of the most satisfying and fun times I've had lately playing a gacha. Building my favorite units up to be veritable powerhouses is a such satisfying feeling to me. And the combat system sees every encounter as something that I want to actually think out and plan, instead of most other games where I'm just hitting buttons and watching things happen. I'm just happy though that Full Metal Alchemist is getting another chance to shine because as one of the best animes that I've seen, and just in general the gameplay that I've experienced in FMA Mobile, I'm really, really hoping that the game lives a very long and very prosperous and eventful life on the markets. At the time of recording, right now FMA Mobile is only available on JP. However, fingers crossed, if the game continues to do well and go in a positive direction, we'll possibly receive a global version in the very near future. Alright, I just wanted to say thank you all so much for who gave this video a shot. Uh, if you like this style of video from me, just be sure to click that subscribe button, hit the bell to be notified of future releases, I'm planning on doing a series of detailed character guides, letting you guys know what units I personally use, their strengths, and some other useful tips. So if you guys would like to see me going through the process of learning more about the game and trying out different units, why don't you go ahead and check out my Twitch page at twitch.tv slash yulnav underscore 93. I stream FMA Mobile most every Friday to try to learn as much as I can about the game and also figure out different strats as I continue my progression. So. Hope to see you guys in the next videos that I am planning on making. 
Hope you guys stay safe out there. And until the next time I see you, you guys take care.